This is video number eight in my time value of money series and in this short presentation I'm going to show the calculation of present value of perpetuities, constant growth uh, investments and uh, present value when we have uh, variable rates. So the first one here is present value of a perpetuity. First off, understand that a perpetuity, unlike annuities, are fixed cash flows occurring indefinitely. In other words, these are our zero growth cash flows. They stay the same from year to year indefinitely. So in this example, we wish to calculate the present value of, um, of a perpetuity that pays $500 per year and we're going to use 8% as a discount rate. Guess what? All we got to do is def divide the perpetuity payment by the discount rate of 8% and that's what I show here. Manual calculation only, nothing more, nothing less. So this comes out to be $6,250 and that's all there is to it. Present value of a cash flow that stays the same indefinitely is always going to be the ratio of that cash flow and the required rate of return. Next up is a case where cash flows are expected to grow at a constant rate indefinitely. In this example our initial cash flow is $500 uh, dollars, and we're, we expect it to grow at, at, the, at a constant rate of 3% indefinitely. So that present value formula which I told you is the motherboard of all valuation really and that anything else that appears sophisticated such as what you saw before for perpetuity and now what you see here for a constant growth cash flow are all variants of that basic present value formula. So we can show that when cash flows are expected to grow indefinitely, uh, grow at a constant rate indefinitely, that that present value um, drops down to what you see right here. It's going to be the ratio of the current cash flow multiplied by 1 plus the growth rate and the difference between the discount rate and the growth rate, which is what I, sh I do, which is what I show here in substitution. And so what this tells us is that if we expect 500 bucks to grow at 3% indefinitely, that the current value of this type of uh, cash flow, this type of investment comes out to be 10300 To utilize this formula, the required rate of return must be greater than the growth rate. Otherwise, it's not going to have any economic interpretation. Finally, I do want to show a case similar to what we looked at with future value where um, present value is being calculated for a set of cash flows in which we expect the discount rate to be different um, across the um, at some point uh, during the uh, investment period. So here these are the projected cash flows. We expect that in the first three years the required rate of return is going to be 8% and then in the last two years is going to be 10% and we wish to calculate the present value of all of these cash flows. As you can see the first thing we need to do is to identify the period where we have this break and that's right here where you see this error. So we're going to sit right here which is the beginning of the second phase and back it up. We're going to find the present value of these cash flows here established at this point. So it's going to be equal to the present value of $90. We're going to discount this 90 over two years at 10%. And also the present value of this 80 at this point, which is this 80 discounted over one period at 10% and then add all that to this 70 right here. And then secondly, we're going to come right here where we really need to be. And we're going to take this guy discounted to the present over one year at 8%, this guy over two years at 8%, and finally whatever it is that we got here, which is going to turn out to be 217.107, we're going to discount it further back over three periods at 8%. So basically this calculation requires that we recognize that what happens over here is going to be based on 10% and what happens during this phase is going to be based on 8%. So that's it here. Manual calculation. All right, CF3 
is this guy right here, 70, which you see right here. CF4 is 80, and this is being discounted over one period. And CF5 is 90. As you can see, it's being, disc being discounted over two periods, which is from here to here. So then, separately, we come down to the present right here, where you see this basic arrow right here. And the first cash flow, which is this 40, will be discounted over one period. That's it right here. Second 150 over two periods. And finally, the um, present value at um, the end of year three, which is what we calculated right here. You see it right here? It's going to be discounted over three periods at R1, which is 8%. So all of that added up will give you 252.25. By the way, we can also use the calculator to do this. So I'm going to come out here and clear, second clear TVM, second clear work. However, because these are different cash flows, I'm going to use the cash flow register right here. Click it and then second clear work. Okay, so again, remember we're going to stay right here and calculate the present value of these ones right here at 10%. So my CF sub zero right here is going to be this 70. So type in 70 and enter. Scroll down to C1, which is now going to be 80, and enter. Scroll to C2, which is going to be 90, and enter. All right, we're done. If you scroll down, you'll see all the values again. So go ahead and hit NPV. I here is going to be 10%. So 10, enter. Scroll down and then compute NPV. So this is the 207.107, which is this guy right here. I'm going to store this result. Store 1. You can store it anywhere. You can store in 0. You can store in 2. Store it anywhere you like. It doesn't matter. So now I'm going to clear the screen. Hit second, clear TVM, second, clear work. Now then, I come down here. Now I'm going to calculate the real present value, which is for everything, which is the second instance right here. So clear again. Now I'm going to hit the cash flow key register and then second clear work to clear out whatever it is we did before. So notice there is no cash flow at time zero here. So let's scroll to um, C1, which is 40. 40, enter. Scroll to C2. C2 is 50. So 50, enter. Scroll to C3, but our C3 is going to be the present value which we calculated earlier at the end of the third period, right here, right? Which we found to be 217 and change. So I stored it. So recall one, which is where I stored it, and then enter. There you go. We're done, all right? You can review your entries to make sure all is well in paradise, right there. And then hit NPV. This time, 8% is the required rate of return, 8. Scroll down, and then compute, and voila!